we need to take the time to um, do that. So I'm going to, looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody just so we don't have noise. But if you have a question, um, you can unmute yourself. Also, um, running the chat today is the infamous um, Anna Sexton, the uh, YouTube famous person, uh, all kinds of things, so she can introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'll be in the chat. Just post them there, and I'll keep that going in the background. She will. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so let me, I think I told him till 405, but I'm going to try to keep up with that weight room and I'm going to mute you all right now. And once again, if you have a, a question or if Anna thinks, you know, I'm going too fast, then, um, she will, um, unmute and ask a question, but, uh, let's just keep it nice and casual today and talk about reflecting and creating. So, <clears throat> I was talking to you about, I'm going to share my screen, I was talking to you about um, how much I like this, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, habits of mind, learning and leading with habits of mind. And the, on chapter 12, it's is called learning through reflection. Really, really important. They go on to talk about that is how we truly find meaning in anything. And when they talk about experiences, we are talking about um, also that oh, you know what I want to say? that um, experiences are those activities that we give also. So I did not okay. So um, talking about that a little bit. Um, so teachers who promote those reflective classrooms, they're making sure that students are fully engaged and making meaning for themselves. And they're not just the consumers of the knowledge, just not like open up their head and throw this knowledge in. If teachers will take the time to be that kind of reflective teacher, then um, students will make their own meaning, which is what they want, what, what we want, truly what we want. Unfortunately, a lot of times we'll ask students to reflect and they may go like, well, how do you do that? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Or you'll get answers like, I really liked that assignment. I really liked that activity, et cetera. So we do kind of have to teach them how to reflect so that they can get the most out of um, the, the reflecting that we want them to do. So, um, okay, um, sorry about that. I'm trying to admit people. Um, so we do have to take a break from what we're teaching. And like I said at the beginning, we have so much to teach. We're like, like cover this, cover this. So we continue to cover everything we need to cover. But sometimes we're gonna have to take a break just to look at what's happening right now, not move forward and not look back, but give, give kids the time to look at what we're working at right now and make uh, sense of it. So the thing that's missing, I think, in distance learning is those good things that we do in the class, discussions. We have discussions, that helps kids reflect. They may just be orally, you know, we're having a discussion, so we're talking about it then. And those teachable moments as we're, as we're at, asking questions and discussing the topic. Those don't come up because, you know, we're not seeing all the kids. Sure, we could do a Zoom meet and um, do some discussion, answering questions and things like that. But those full class participation and teachable moments are kind of kind of gone. We're, we're, we're talking to kids individually, privately commenting that, to them. So I think, um, I'm going to go over two um, tech apps that I think will really help give kids the opportunity to reflect and also add a kind of creative touch to it. So um, questioning is the other thing that's missing from distance learning. Yes, we can ask questions in Google Classroom and I hope you guys are. Get them to really think about things, those open-ended questions um, so they can reflect on the learning. So. Um, don't forget about that. Of course, logs and journals are always great. I know people are still doing them uh, virtually, which is great. And so um, I'm going to talk to you about using uh, podcasting as a way for students to reflect and um, creating 
and or creating a new Google Sites as a way to reflect. So those are the two things we're kind of look at. And um, I'll just show you how to kind of set those up. I really think that they are intuitive enough that you're not going to you're not going to have that teach piece. You're not going to have to sit down and teach them, make a recording. Um, we know that our kids, when they want to learn something, boy, they get on YouTube, they get wherever they mess around with it till they figure out how to do it. So if we're going to give them these opportunities to be creative and look at things in a different way, um, reflecting on their learning, they'll be able to learn these two um, tech apps really easily. And I'm going to show you how easy it is um, for, for, to use them. So the first one we're going to talk about is um, podcasting. And I like to use the anchor.fm. Um, you just type in anchor.fm and it comes up right away. You and your students can log in with Google and um, basically it looks the same. So kids use their, you know, log in with Google and then it goes, goes to that. So I'm going to click log in with Google. And of course, mine is already set up. Let me show you real quick what it looks like when you first log in to Anchor. So, yeah, not that one, that one. So when you first log in, it's going to say, what do you want to do? So you want to make your first episode? You want to set up your podcast? So I usually like to start with, let's, set, let's make our first episode. The setting up of the podcast is actually creating like the uh, cover art, the topic for the whole umbrella of the of the podcast because you know podcasts are very popular right now and people continue to have different episodes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes so as students start using this as a way to reflect and create we might want to give them some time to think about what their title of their their podcast is what their cover art wants to be and so once you've created an episode then yes you're gonna to go to this point where you actually add your cover art. So we'll go over that. So let me get back to Anchor. And so the tools that you see here in um, Anchor are um, kind of pretty simple for sure. Um, you have the dashboard. As you create episodes, you can see them here, episodes. This is, you know, maybe someday if we give this opportunity to students, um, they'll, they'll be famous. Podcasting famous. Okay, we've got everybody. So I'm going to start first by showing if we're going to um, just start a new episode. So you just click on new episode, and these are your choices. So they're pretty, really self-explanatory, easy to use. The the you can record your voice. Um, students could also add any kind of voice messages to their episode. So if they are, you know, interviewing somebody, they could add that. You could save some of your clips to a library and add them. And there's music transitions. So when you first start maybe um, talking to kids about creating an episode, you might, uh, a, a podcast, you might want to have them listen to a podcast. There's lots of them out there. NPR has some great ones. I think there's some in our um, in the ELA uh, Pearson book, all kinds. So when I've worked with kids in classes, um, we play the podcast and ask them, what do you notice? And they notice that, oh, there's music. Oh, and people are really talking passionately about something. They're, you know, they're really excited about what they're talking about. And we say, yes, th this is true. So that's what we want you to do is is use your voice to get that point across. So the two tools I use the most with students are these. And it can be simply like, let's start with the music, uh, uh, music first. So we can click on transitions and listen to different um, music sounds and play it and see, oh, do I like that one? I'm not sure if y'all can hear it, but I'm gonna pick one. There's all kinds, you can tell how long they are and um, kids can decide which one fits what their podcast topic is, their reflection. So when I'm talking about reflections, I'm talking across the curriculum. So when, um, like right now, I think um, the science, they're doing ecosystems and characteristics of organisms. 
great. You know, kids really need to know that stuff. So they create a podcast to reflect on what they know, what they want to know more about, and really, you know, think, think about what they're learning. Um, history, I think uh, they're talking about the census. What a great, you know, thing to talk about. We need every 10 years a census. And also um, podcasting at this point in history, I mean, think about it it will become a primary source. That's pretty exciting. If you could, you know, say, hey, I can see into the future that what I'm talking about could be, end up being a primary source because I was here, I was living through this pandemic and I was going to school from home, you know, and everybody was teaching from home, something different. So another good reason to get kids to just express themselves too. So uh, even in math, so math people don't say, hey, that's not for me get kids talking about math It'd be great right now they're doing some financial planning so we can they can talk about that uh, describing data it's in the real world so let's get them talking about it so i don't want anybody to say no this isn't for me my kids it's only for english language arts it's across the curriculum kids can create podcasts so when you find the music clip maybe you want to start with and this is kind of what i do with kids start with a music clip so you click this plus sign and you'll see it come over here to your episode where you're building your episode basically and um, these are um, things that can be moved around and you get them in order before you save your episode or publish it so um, usually what i ask kids to do then is okay so have you scripted something do you have something written out or sometimes maybe we, we just want them to speak from the heart because podcasting is great for those kids that maybe don't enjoy writing or can't get enough information out with writing. But boy, when they talk to you, you're like, okay, I, I can hear, they got it, you know, they understand it. So it's another way of finding if they've mastered something. And maybe they can't write it all out. Maybe they're not good test takers, but if you let them talk about it, maybe they're gonna show, show you mastery. And so um, the Chromebooks have a built-in microphone, so they don't have to get an external mic. iPads, of course, there is an app for um, Anchor. And uh, it has about the same functionalities, a little bit more actually. And on the, on the website here, you cannot um, really edit the sound clips, but on the app, you can. So you could cut, you know, cut out the front and the back of a clip if you want to. So this would be kind of the meat and potatoes of, you know, the, the, the part of your uh, podcast that you would talk about. Click start recording. It starts recording right away. Today we were talking about personal finances in, in math class. And I got this live situation where um, the person I am has, you know, two kids. Um, and my job is an engineer and I make $80,000 a year. And, you know, I think that's a lot of money. But now that I'm looking at the kind of bills, et cetera, they could talk about that. So you'll see this sound clip that you're creating. It creates it right here. And um, process it. And then you see the plus sign, so you can add it to your episode. You would add it to your episode over here. And sometimes it takes a little while to process, but not, not too bad. So you continue to build this podcast. Maybe you want another little piece of music here to transition to something else. That was your introduction, and now you're going to um, continue. So, so they're building a story here with their voice and just continue to be as creative. Once again, getting that creativity in, in there, letting kids produce instead of just consume. So they're creating, always beneficial for critical thinking um, and, and for um, student success. You know, if, if, if a student is really good at this, and I've been in classes where um, they, were, they were reading a, the first draft of their English paper and they recorded it and then they went skipping out of the room saying, they were, I'm gonna be on Spotify. I'm like, well, not really, but I'm glad you're excited. So getting kids engaged again, this might be the thing like, oh, okay, this might be, you know, what I can do, what I'll be good at. So uh, we're trying to engage that distance learner for sure. 
So this might be something you could introduce. And once again, not so difficult that you'd have to have this big learning, you know, this big video to teach them how to do it. Click, click, they could probably figure it out. And I'm sure there's lots of videos on YouTube. So anyway, so you build your episode here. They could preview it again and, you know, students always do and they go back and change. I don't like how it sounds. That's great. Fine, you know, they're at home. They um, have the time. Then you're going to um, save your episode. Once you um, save, you're gonna be asked to um, give it a title. And I'm gonna say reflection of personal finance. That's what I was just talking about. And so uh, I thought, thought I, hold on, I made lots of money. So maybe that's kind of the focus, like, wow, it seemed like a lot of money, but after you buy a house and a car, et cetera, et cetera. So you can continue down. Of course, it'll start talking about, um, you know, if you want it, you publish it. Um, but so we do, you can save it as a draft. So students can save it and come back to it and keep adding to it. But I wanted to show you um, when you publish it, it's going to now, um, it doesn't ask me because I already have my artwork set up. So let me show you what it's going to ask um, when you first open it up. It's going to basically ask you the, the name. So now you have to give it a title and a description in case anybody's searching for it. Um, education, it's in English. And after you click continue, then you're gonna get this where you're gonna choose your cover art. And so that will be your little logo for your um, podcast. Uh, and you can search for a photo, you can upload some images or they can choose one for you. So there's lots in there and then it'll show whatever title, it'll just make that, um, that cover art for you. So I'm gonna come back over here because it already, I already have that, my cover art. So I wanted to show you that um, when you're working with it up on the dashboard here, we see our, um, our podcast right here, or one of our episodes. When um, we click on episodes, this is where, um, so if you, you're having students turn it into you in Google Classroom, um, so that you have a couple of choices. You'll, they click on these three dots right here, and that is where they can copy a public link to an episode, so it just produces a link, and then the students can turn it into you there in Google Classroom as a link. It can also be downloaded as an MP, MP3, MP3. Um, I've had students do this before where they downloaded it, um, then they made a Google slide that was kind of a logo for their, um, for their podcast, and then insert the audio on that Google slide, which is awesome too. But I think most of the time we're gonna ask kids to maybe copy a link and give the link to the teacher so we can listen to it. So those are the, those are the choices there. You continue um, to hopefully add new episodes, which would be awesome, uh, and continue that reflection. And you can always come back and edit different uh, episodes, things like that. So everybody doing okay? I know I talk fast and with my hands, but I think this is pretty intuitive. Um, there might be a few steps in there that, but I, I don't think anybody can go wrong with it. I do have a question. Sure. So um, if you have a MP3 audio file saved, can mm -hmm. you upload that instead mm -hmm. of recording directly into the app? Yes, you can, you can. So when you're over here on um, like your episode, I'm just gonna start a new episode. Over here, you can um, upload uh, voice messages here. You can <clears throat> um, upload to your, to your library here. So any kind of um, audio files can be saved to your, to your library. 
So these would be any uploaded um, and then messages. And that can be done on the app or it also can be on um, the website. And so I think that's what happens a lot is, is uh, kids will have different, uh, depending on the project, you know, maybe they interviewed somebody and they used Bokaroo or they used some other audio, then they can upload it to um, and, and include it in the podcast. Is that good? Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Sure. Thank you. So that is um, Anchor. Anchor.fm. It's also an app. Um, so um, get kids creating, reflecting. You know, when I wanted to kind of focus on why the whole reason to build this podcast is so that we can get that reflecting back into um, the classroom. Okay, so I'm going to move on next to um, the other tech application I think is really easy for students to use and it's the new Google Sites and teachers we used to make Google Sites and then they took them away from us and all these different things but now um, new Google Sites is available for students teachers also um, and very easy for you to get to so I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna go to my app launcher and I'm going to, sorry about all this, okay, here we go. Um, and I'm gonna go to sites. And you'll notice, you'll see, you know, the, the classic sites that you have, but um, we're gonna focus on this new Google Sites because it is new and they, they uh, plug it as um, drag and drop, easy for anybody to create a website. And it's true, you know, almost anybody can create a website. And I think kids would get super excited about, I have a website. And it's, you know, based on the, the units of study from whatever subject area, showing their processing. So let me go through the steps of creating a Google, new Google site. So you click here on new Google sites. And our sites live in our Google Drive. So they cannot be shared with anybody outside of Northside. So, but that, that's okay. Um, I think if we have kids um, using this as a reflection tool, they could still share with their teacher, definitely with other students, um, and um, embed, um, I'll show you in a minute how you can maybe embed a Google form to get comments. Um, there's not really a good blog format out there for kids, so um, this Google Sites is kind of what I recommend to teachers when they say, oh, I want my kids to blog about the book that they're reading, or the, the, the unit in science that we're doing. And I find that this works pretty good for um, getting those comments or questions through a Google form. So, so what you do is you start down here, once again, very intuitive, plus signs, adding, you know. So I'm gonna create a new um, site. Hopefully it's building it over here. And, um, so you start out by um, titling your slide. So I'm gonna, I've been doing this. So I'm gonna call it Reflections. You'll want to also um, enter the site name. What Google Sites will do later on when you're building uh, the URL, it'll take whatever you've decided to make as your site name, it'll try to make that the URL. So um, I'm just gonna say uh, my let's even say maybe it's seventh grade science or whatever, some seventh grade science. And when you click here, it's going to name your site. You'll want to do that whatever you decide. So this is, this is the title that you will see in your Google Drive. So it'd be really good, be sure to click there so that when you're looking in your drive, it doesn't say untitled site and you're like, what is it? So you, you can start here um, and this is your home page. The tools over here to the right make it really easy for you to drag and drop exactly as it says. So it's, it is Google, so it's very friendly to Google. I'm gonna come down here. So let's say um, 
there's already a Google Doc. Students already have a Google Doc uh, in their drive. Maybe it was some work they've already done for you, some other um, type of writing that they've done for you, or uh, maybe it was um, you giving them information, and now they're going to reflect on it. So it's very easy for them to click on Docs, and then it goes to their drive, like which doc do you want to insert here? So, you know, there's all kinds. I'm going to go with my student reflection. Then you have one selected, you click insert, and then it ends up right here on your website. It's also super easy to create some type of layout. So it's going to say, okay, I want a picture or video here and I want some room to type. So you click on the layout and that's what you end up with on your site over here. All of these can be, you know, uh, moved around, added to. So you click here to add your pictures or your videos. So kids can start th thinking about already, well, am I going to have three things I'm going to talk about, a couple? Do I just want one page of pictures that helps me reflect and helps me um, understand the learning a little bit better? However, this is the whole creation piece. and and kids are going to just wow us. They're really going to um, surprise us with the kinds of things that they can create. So um, this makes it super, super easy. After you have your first, your home page, um, this top part here, you can click over on pages. There's your home page. Of course, we want to add some more. So uh, we're going to click the plus sign. We want a new page. And maybe this first page is going to be, um, I'm gonna switch over to a novel study. So chapter one, this is where I'm gonna talk about what the book that I'm reading. So that creates a page for me that I can now click on and I can create what's gonna happen, what I want to show up on my linked page, uh, chapter one. And I go back to insert and I want to insert this type of layout. Uh, anytime you want to uh, embed like a YouTube video, you can do it here, or you can also do it down here. YouTube videos, anything from your drive, you can um, upload images or you can select an image from your drive. So just about anything, you know, very easily, you can insert a text box like, whoops, I forgot, I needed to write. Oh, I really want that text box up here, sorry. You can drag it and then bring it up to the top because I need it to be my title. So easily drag and drop to create, you know, whatever you want your website to look like. And you continue adding pages. That's what's great about it. This, this whole idea of creating podcasts or episodes in a podcast and also um, a website gives the kid, students opportunities to reflect on the process. And we know that's the most important thing, not that end product. Yes, you know, they, they will create some nice uh, websites, but the process that they went through. I'm always telling teachers, cause they're like, oh, you know, I tried to do this and they had, you know, um, they didn't spell the word right. They didn't, you know, all maybe little errors, but did they go through a process to create. Yes, there was a lot of learning that happened in that process. Was it a perfect video? Was it a perfect podcast? That's okay. We're not in the perfect publish, I mean, you know, publishing perfect things. We're in the, the business of helping kids process and own their learning. So we don't, of course, we want them to not misspell words and make everything look good, but we can't get down on ourselves if the kids don't do the complete job that they want because they did learn something by going through the process. So don't negate that, that knowledge that they received by just creating. So you can continue, you know, adding, you know, uh, pages for different chapters. So if we're back um, like in math for personal finance, maybe um, they can record about what their job is, um, what their house payment is. So there's all kinds of ways we can take this across the curriculum. So writing across the curriculum, so important, sorry. Okay, personal finance. 
And then now you're creating that page and what design do you want? You go back to insert and how, what do you want that page to look like? In, in, including any of these or inserting anything here. I was talking earlier about um, the, the podcast. So students could create a slide. I had some uh, Calm Maps teacher, uh, students do that where they were talking about a charity or how to help San Antonio. They made just one slide of like the logo from San Antonio Food Bank or et cetera. And then they inserted that podcast into that slide and then they put it on their uh, website. So it's kind of like all lots of creative things going on, which is really what we want kids to do. I don't think kids get enough time to be creative, curious about things, wanting to know more about things. So when you have to create and you guys know it, you do it all the time because you're creating lessons and creating experiences for kids. It pushes you, pushes your brain, it stretches you. So I think the more we can ask kids to create the, the more critical thinking skills, soft skills of communication, et cetera, that we're, that we're helping them with. So there's another, uh, over here, there's themes. So you can already kind of jazz it up a little bit. Of course, you could insert, you could change the image. Uh, but you could change the style of it just by clicking this. So you could, you know, use it. You could decide on, you know, a font style for each one of those themes. Uh, you could, you know, of course, you could, you know, insert your own picture also. So once student, they can decide on a, a style that they like and go that fits their topic. Um, so when you're um, typing in a text box, you can use um, the title uh, font, the size of the font, there's heading, subheadings, normal text. So um, all of those type, bold, italicized, you can center, uh, numbered list, same thing. This uh, insert link, so you can um, type words or a picture and then link it somewhere else, link it to a YouTube video, link it, link it out maybe back to a website that you, uh, you had asked the kids to, to read, any kinds of things they can link it back to. And there's always these really great, like, oh no, I need to, you know, I need to edit something. I did something wrong. It's very, um, very intuitive and so simple for the kids to create. We don't want it to be too hard. We don't want it to be a webmaster kind of experience, but just a creating, getting your words down there, getting your, getting your thoughts, getting images um, to represent. So once you have, um, you know, students have created, they'll, you will want them to publish eventually. So let's look at some of these tools up here. We have those same great Google tools that I've used, yes, a lot, like Undo and um, Redo. You can also use this to preview what your website looks like. So you can look at it and say, okay, um, what is it going to look like for, um, sorry, can I move this? Uh, what is it gonna look like on an iPhone? What's it gonna look like on a tablet? What's it gonna look like on a laptop? So you can see, hmm, what is, so you uh, close that preview. When you're ready to, um, to publish, and we will want to publish, and that's what's great about this too, it's this whole idea of we're getting kids to create, reflect, and then we're, letting, we're having them publish. That's a really important uh, part. If you're a Casey Bell um, Shake Up Learning um, person, like all, I think all of us coaches are, that's kind of what she says. That's what's missing from all of the things. We've got to get it out there. So it's important enough for kids to do their very best work. If they know it's going to be published, they know other people are going to see it, that's when they're going to do their very best work. So publishing it. So when you um, click on publish, it, like I said, it tries to name it basically what you gave it. And most of the time it can, and that it ends up being your uh, web address. This is the whole web address. And then you continue and you can click publish. 
then you have this site, you have a, a web address that you can share and um, share out with your teacher, share with your classmates. Maybe um, you in Google Classroom can ask them to, um, to share their web addresses so other people can see. Uh, I was talking earlier about uh, including like a Google form so kids could put um, comments so you can insert a Google form here. So you would just have to go to forms and decide which form you want to insert there. And then, then students could collect reactions, comments, questions, um, kind of like a blog, but not, not really, not, not a true blog. So you can include that. Anytime you make a change, to, so I'm coming in here and I'm going to add some, some text in here about um, my thoughts of uh, first chapter. Um, maybe I really thought crazy way to start a novel. <laughs> maybe I thought it was a really crazy opening. So I'm going to reflect on that. So anytime I make any changes, I need to come back over to publish and it'll show me, hey, well, this is what's already published and here's the um, draft. Do you really want to, you know, publish what the draft is? And then you just continue to click publish after you make changes. The URL stays the same, so you don't have to change any of that. As I've been working with teachers um, to to help them um, get students creating. What I've, ha what I've used with them is um, to create a Google form to collect these web addresses so that you can go in and give it as a grade. Maybe, you know, maybe that was your assignment, whatever way. Maybe you're giving them the choice of how to reflect, but it is part of your assignment. They need to write a reflection piece. So, okay, it can be either recording through podcast Maybe you're giving them this Google Sites choice. Maybe you're giving them Flipgrid because some kids like to be in, in a video. So you're giving choices. That's really, really important. So this could be a way for you to um, gather those sites so you can continue to stay on, you know, give them a grade, stay on top of it. Just have them choose their class period and just paste that URL. You'll um, turn this uh, form into a spreadsheet and you'll always have whoever is working on a Google site as part of that, that assignment. So really easy to collect those, um, those web addresses. Okay, so here's my reflection piece. Does anybody have any questions? Are we doing okay? There's all kinds of other fancy stuff you can put over here, buttons and dividers, and I'm trying to keep it really um, simple. Um, so, and not really Should, get into webmaster, but. Um, Jeanette, if you will just show them, since you did talk about podcasting, they were asking about how do you embed their podcast in there? Can you show that part? Like sure. how do you bring the link over? Well, actually what I, have had students do in the past is to create a slideshow. So I can go and create a new um, slideshow or if I had it on my slideshow here where I was uh, talking about podcasting, I would have kids come insert and they would come insert the audio here. And depending on um, like where it is, so, um, Oh, wait, how did I do it? Oh my gosh, wait a minute. How did I do it? Oh, it's in your drive. So you would search for it in your drive and it's an MP4. I don't think I have anything in there. But once you find it in your drive, then you can insert. And uh, what we did was, um, it was like this. So we created, you know, a place where we like, clicked on the image. We made a hyperlink to that. So if people wanted to listen to the podcast, then we just had them click on the picture from the logo of the, um, the community service they were researching. Did that make sense? And then it's super easy to get that slideshow onto your, um, onto your website by clicking on slides and then going and just finding that one slide that you've already created Hopefully, if Google 
likes us. Um, so you'll find the, you know, it was just one slide. And um, there's an ABC word book. What is that? That might be elementary. Um, insert it, but it was just one slide and then it was inserted. They could actually listen to the audio on that one slide. Does that answer it? Kind of a multi step process doing both uh, projects. If they wanted to link directly to, um, if I recall correctly, on Anchor, is there a um a hyperlink function to the actual podcast too that they can just hyperlink. Is that correct? Yes. So the link, they can either um, share um, their episode with you by a link or they could download an MP4. So here they would um, click and then they would copy a link and then you could link that in your slideshow also. So see if I can link it here. No. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. No. That's not what I want to do. Where is my oh I'm sorry. Where did my link go? I thought it would be I don't know where it went. I usually have them download the episode, unfortunately. So the, the link, the public link that was being used, it's kind of weird how I worked with the class before spring break and they had created this podcast and was with some L's and they did so, such a great job, but then they weren't going to go back to that Chromebook where they had downloaded it. So we, we got this, uh, you know, that you can copy the public link. And so I'm sorry, I'm not as familiar with that where that public link i thought it would just be on the clipboard i'll have to get back with you on that to see where that link went do you know anna because it certainly didn't go to my clipboard um that should be it the, just the control c control v if i'm not mistaken should have just brought it over so it just may be something within the yeah, recording yeah within the right right okay okay so that should be easy but once again reach out to your coaches to let's talk about exactly how you want to use it let's talk about your curriculum let's talk about your unit of study and let's find the best tools for what you what your purpose is 